even when you are asleep, even when you are uh, at your death. So, the essence of contributing to such a world, with such a scale, it will help you build your skills, especially when you are still there, when you are still there, you are still there. And as a student or as a developer, you need to improve your resume, you need to uh, show experience on your resume and uh, contributing to open source is a good way to achieve. So, object like Apache APS is being used by thousands of companies. It is used to work with millions and millions of users. When you are contributing to a project at such a scale, it can add a lot of value to your resume. And of course, there is a network that comes with open source. When you are contributing to open source, you get to work with like minded people. You get to network with them. Uh, so, uh, so, yeah, and networks generally help you with uh, your career because it helps you get more opportunities. So, contributing to open source also helps uh, building that network. And another reason why you might want to contribute to open source is that you get to contribute to software that you use. So probably a lot of us use to do that software like together. We have, we use a lot of open source software. Probably if you are here, you use, if you are here at this conference, you use a lot more open source software than most of the people do. So as a contributor, you can actually make changes to this project. You can help this project, you can help this project. So contributing to something that you already use is a good reason. So if you use, let's say, some uh, Java something like that, you can use a website. You can actually contribute to the uh, contribute back to the Java something like that. And contributing to open source is another great way to find a mentor. So there are programs like uh, Google Server of Code or the US Foundation Membership Program. That actually connect you to uh, mentors, connect you to open source maintainers. So, contributing to open source can actually uh, uh, make it easy for you to find mentors. So, let's say you may be come from a small town where you don't really have open source contributors, where, where you don't really have mentors who can guide you uh, into a career of uh, software engineering. So, contributing to open source increases that opportunity. Enables you to find uh, new mentors who can actually help you uh, uh, go forward in your career. I find it open source means uh, community. So just like uh, why we are all here at this conference, uh, we are here to talk about the open source project and we are here because we are part of a community that helps with that sustain that. So you get to be a part of a uh, community uh, uh, that. Not only builds and forms of open source, but we also get to be part of the community of life of the community. Uh, the next point is why we do not talk about education. So, uh, so when we talk about uh, uh, contributory purposes, we generally talk about contributory people. We generally talk about some uh, Expert developer wanted to do the thing. I go somewhere and push it into master. But number of contributions, contributions that do not involve code, are often more valuable than computer code. And I think that is because open source has become the default way to build software. So earlier, open source was just a way for someone to share something that they have built. But Right now, uh, open source is the default way to do software. So, to sustain an open source project, you, you not only need for code contributions, you also need non code contributions. So, non code contributions are actually quite impactful and very helpful in sustaining an open source project. And very often, there will be a lot of code contributors to the project, there will be a lot of developers who are wanting to go to the project, but there will be are a lot less non code contributors. And we need non code contributors to help make the project successful. And making non code contributions often has a huge impact, even more impact than contributing code sometimes. So it has a huge impact in the success of the project. So non code contributions make a lot of sense. 
And there are also some other reasons. So even if you are not a governor, uh, all of us might not be governors, but still we can contribute to open source, we can still uh, uh, be impactful as open source contributor. So even if you are not a governor, uh, so if you are not a governor, you can make one of contributions. And definitely you need to be still to contact in some other way. So if you are still in making one of contributions, you can definitely impact open source projects as well. And finally, non-code contributions can be a stepping stone to core contributions. So when you are a student or when you are in Canada, you often lack the confidence to directly contribute to open source projects. So making non-code contributions can be important, can, can be a stepping stone that can eventually be the top core contributions. Alright, so in this part of the talk, I want to focus on what all non-code contributions we can make. And hopefully you will find something that interests you and hopefully you will be able to make impactful contributions uh, through that uh, through that area. So I want to start with writing. So most projects uh, any project is useless if you don't have good contributions. So people cannot use what they don't understand. So even if you have a, a good product. If you don't have a uh, good documentation that goes around your product, people won't be able to find that new space. Uh, so even if you do that, it will be a piece of software, but without proper documentation, without proper uh, talks around how, how people can create a new image, or how they can contact with the Hulu, or how they can create a new image, it won't be as accessible. You don't have that. Level of adoption that it has to be. So, uh, as a writer, like if you are good at technical writing, if you are good at creative content, then you can make contributions as a writer. So, how can you make contributions as a writer? First of all, write documentation. And the other way is to write a blog post. So, to write a blog post, you don't need permissions, permissions from anyone. You can create your own blog. You can easily set up a static website uh, for free. Or you can use platforms like Dev.io uh, or uh, uh, any of these other uh, platforms are there. You can write blog posts. Okay. I personally prefer uh, a detailed blog post for documentation because it, it follows a uh, more classic of the context. So if you write a blog post about how you are using a blog post, or how people can contribute to the software, or how people can use a particular library, or how to work with a software project. It is quite like helpful for others uh, uh, who are looking to uh, go to that. So, writing blog posts, writing articles are actually quite like helpful. And the best part is you don't need permission from them, you just write it on them. And the next thing is to translate all the information. Because we are in the book of this is a great example. Yesterday we had a talk that we made more. It's talk about uh, translating our uh, book. And uh, translating our documentation can uh, actually increase accessibility. Even though India is a uh, uh, majority English speaking country, at least most engineers are expected to learn this set English. Having translated documentation opens the door for uh, a lot more people to get involved in So uh, I'm from Kerala and in Kerala we all schools used to do. So it was enabled only uh, with uh, a Malayalam translation. So you know, we have a separate operating system in Kerala which has a Malayalam version of the which opened uh, the whole world of computers and internet to the whole population of Kerala. So translation is Quite impactful, and with projects like Google, translating is uh, quite easy. I even saw a CNCF project having a higher population. I don't know why it is there, but it is there. So people are um, making impactful contributions through translation. And uh, uh, most documentation or most uh, project promotion go beyond the presentation website, go beyond the project. So, with social media, most projects have social media accounts. 
And they need people to do their own and to campaign successfully. You need to promote that person. You need to showcase a new feature that you have created. So, for all those things, you need someone to create a campaign for that. So, if you, are, if you, if you can write a diamond picture, if you have that captions for Instagram and posts, definitely you can comment on that. The next way we contribute as a onboard monitor is through your designs. So, uh, as a designer, you are expected to be creative and you are expected to write design and you are expected to have skills as a designer. So, all of these, all of these uh, posters you see was designed by some designer. And actually, they are making, even though they are not directly contributing, even though they may not be. Contributed directly to the group, they are making a uh, sustained project through their insights, through their creative uh, work. Uh, so, if you are someone like that, you can definitely make uh, good contributions. So, you can create art, artworks for blog posts, social media posts, and you can even create t shirts. So, someone in my company designed this APS t shirt, there is someone who designed the uh, so you can use that as well. And another, uh, uh, another represented way is to like, create a territory. So most of those products have contributors from around the world. So people with different ideas, people with different backgrounds are contributing to a single thing. So they can, there can be like inconsistency in the issue designs. So if you are a dialogue designer, you can create a style guide. You can enforce the style guide of uh, different parts of the product and so And the next uh, way you can contribute is probably the most easiest thing you can do. Everyone can do it, even if you are not a programmer. Having that computers, you can still contribute to almost the right uh, as a tester, as a user. So, the only thing you need to do is to be a user of open source project. That could mean using an open source operating system. That could mean using an open source uh, library like React or Angular uh, or like any of the open source libraries. Uh, the only thing you need to do is to be a user of open source project. So as a user, you can easily find the bugs. Even if you don't try to actively find bugs, you might encounter bugs. So when you encounter bugs, the easiest thing you can do is to report it to the professor students. You don't need to know how to fix the bug. You don't need to know a lot about the bugs, how to fix them, and the effect. You just have to report the bugs. A good, well-written bugger box is very helpful in the US. It can easily be able to introduce issues and can be easily able to fix the issues. So the only thing you have to do is to use the bugger in your class. And you can also be an advocate for them. So most of us are not employed by Kenoide, but we still talk about it because we are still uh, we are still working on the new year, and we are an advocate for open source. So, if you are using a project, you can just be an advocate You can help uh, market the project, you can help, uh, you can help sustain the project, you can help uh, the project to So, this is because most open source projects don't have large corporate backing, they rely on the world of all, they rely on the open source to run market. And everybody gets the market. And the other thing you can do is to help improve the user experience. So even so, when you are uh, a new user, when you are just starting out uh, using an open source project, you you don't have a lot of preconceived notions. So you will be able, easily able to identify user experience issues. Because most maintainers are too close to project to find issues. So as a new user, you will be able to easily identify user experience issues. You will be able to find some character experience issues. 
and you can record these issues as well. So you can record these issues as input into the user experience. And these are all, always generous because uh, someone using uh, someone engineering can might not be able to find such issues. Only a new user can. And another easy thing to do is to sign up for alpha and beta testing. So instead of uh, instead of using any uh, FTS versions, instead of using these uh, versions, you can uh, try the alpha or uh, beta versions. You can test the project before it is made available to the project. And uh, you can find, you can help uh, identify issues before the project is actually released. And all of those projects. Uh, like you can easily do that with your with your customers, users and like as well. So this is also a very easy thing to do, a very low hand way to work with the users. And the other thing is uh, you can be a mentor. So uh, even if you are not a, a very seasoned open source computer, you might have specific skill sets. For example, you might be uh, a good Python program. Even if you haven't contributed to an open source project, you might be a good Python program. So, uh, if you are experienced like that, uh, you can help newcomers, uh, you can help you know, uh, uh, mentor to do things. So if you have certain skill sets that are useful for the projects, you can help uh, you can like, pay it forward as a, as, as a mentor and you can help newcomers. There are also programs like uh uh programs uh which can mentors to mentees. So if you are already an open source contributor, uh you can uh, you can increase your scope of contribution by uh, becoming a mentor. another easy thing to do is to be a code reader. So anyone can review for uh most uh public teacher diversities. So even if you are not an internet, even if you are not an internet, you can still uh, help a project by adding your videos. You can review what on the purpose and this is how it's helpful for your videos. And finally, if you have, if you are already wanted to be the process, if you are already involved in the process, uh, pay for it. Help more videos on the process. Help you uh, be, be the person who you don't have. So you can pay it forward, you can make their lives uh, easier. And this is the uh, last thing about mission, which is community management. Or how you can contribute to open source as a community manager. Uh, I often say this, but open source projects are a product of its community. So open source projects. Uh, so the community comes up, comes up and builds an open source project. It is not the other way around. But these communities need some management. You need to sustain this, this community uh, to sustain the open source project. So as a community manager, you are expected to do a lot of things. You are not contributing to it, but you are doing an important job. You have to do a lot of things. So you might be expected to organize a project. So recently there was a project called Gorilla, which is a library of a package in Gorilla. So the project has to have to shut down because there were no people uh, helping to organize the project. Not even people who help organize the project. There were no people to uh, check the issues as well as the project. So, the group was a big problem for the township because there were no community managers like this, there were no people helping to organize people. So, as an organizational project, uh, you are expected to uh, answer issues, you are expected to follow up on issue uh, comments, you are expected to uh, help people uh, improve their issues, you are expected to that people introduce who are expected to add later solutions, all sorts of stuff that is often overlooked but can uh, really help a project. The other thing you can do is to be a business manager. 
So a lot of big open source projects have a lot of code that working on code and you always need someone to organize the code release. So that's like uh, Kubernetes have a code release team uh, which often accepts their own parameters uh, and they observe how the release is made and they can actually become a release manager themselves. So as a release manager, we coordinate with multiple parameters and coordinate teams to manage uh, timelines, we manage uh, alpha data resources, we manage other products. So we produce independent services and we get feed that person. And for me, it can also organize the best activities. And it has like two problems. Very good for us, and thanks to a lot of us, we do this video from the country's audience in the school place. So, thank you for checking out all of our videos. So, organizing events and organizing events around the project can help the project grow, can help the development of the future, and it is eventually the result of our very planning population. And finally, I want to say that this series is not exhaustive. Means there are a lot more other ways where we can do graphic computations without other For example, we, uh, probably later in this week, we have a talk from Michelle from Force United. So, Force United is an open source professional in India. And we are trying to work with governments, we are trying to work with our political leaders, we are trying to work with uh, think tanks into making better open source policies. So, most uh, we can grant uh, and, and we just say governments are very interested in open source, they are very interested in open source, but policy are open source. So as an open source contributor, we are probably better able to make these uh, policies. We are probably we probably know better than let's say politicians about open source. So we can actually make uh, contributions that directly impact people, that directly impact uh, the uh, public policy. So the reason is not exhausting, we can still make a lot of contributions and these contributions are very important. And if you are interested in making some number of contributions, one of them is interested in contributing the code. Apache uh, ABS has a lot of other issues and uh, we will be happy to help you out in making the first contribution. So, if you go to this link, you will directly find uh, open issues across multiple titles, across multiple programming languages where you can make uh, contributions. And that's it for me. Uh, I think we still have some time to uh, ask and answer questions. So feel free to ask any questions about uh, open contributions and open answers. And uh, if you want to reach out to me after that, uh,